Hello, my name is Mr. Ellerbush. I teach sixth grade math at Gibbs Middle School. Today we're going to review ratios and rates, but first let's revisit last week's challenge problem. This is one possible solution to last week's challenge problem. Tune in next week for the solution to this week's challenge problem that I'll present at the end of this lesson. Today, to begin talking about ratios and rates, let's begin with our Spark Your Learning uh, assignment that was in your packet. When we uh, look at the Spark Your Learning assignment, we realize that this assignment is about ratios and rates. Um, it says that we're converting between measurement systems or in using equivalent ratios and conversion factors. The first thing I, I do when I solve this spark your learning problem is obviously to read the problem. Let's read the problem together. At Winnie's restaurant, one serving of chicken soup is one and one half cups. The chef makes 48 cups of soup each night. How many servings of chicken soup are in 48 cups? Explain how you know. So the first thing I notice when I read this question is exactly what they're asking us to do. We want to figure out how many servings of chicken soup are in 48 cups. So we know from our prior learning in fifth grade and fourth grade that if we're trying to figure out how many servings fit into the 48 cups, then really we're splitting the 48 cups into servings. So we know right up front that this is a division problem. And in fact, this would be a division of fractions problem. But if we think about this in a slightly different way using ratios and rates, we can verify that this is in fact a division problem for a slightly different reason. The very first sentence of the problem gives us a ratio to work with. It tells us at Winnie's restaurant, one serving of chicken soup is one and one half cups. I'm going to begin with that ratio in order to solve the problem. If I begin with a ratio of one serving, is one and one half cups, then I can lay out my ratio in that order, keeping the order the same. If I want to use an equivalent ratio system in order to be able to figure out the answer, I would need to then predict how many servings are in 48 cups. Since I have cups on the bottom, I have to put my 48 cups on the bottom of the equivalent ratio. In order for me to solve for the missing number, the missing number of servings that is, I would have to be able to scale from the one serving up to the answer, the number of servings. But you can tell that there's, there's no known scale factor yet. In order to find our scale factor to figure out what we're going to multiply by to get the answer, we would need to figure out what we can multiply the denominator of the first ratio by in order to get the denominator of the second ratio. So in other words, what can we multiply 1 and 1 half by in order to get 48? Well, the way we would figure that scale factor out is to work backwards. So if I can multiply in one direction to scale up to 48, then I must be able to divide in the other direction to scale down. So let's divide 48 in 1 and 1 half. I'm going to begin with 48 divided by 1 and 1 half. Hopefully we remember from classroom learning that in order to divide fractions, we're actually not dividing. We're multiplying by the reciprocal. So in order to multiply by the reciprocal, I'm first going to have to change any Im mixed numbers that I have into improper fractions, and I'm going to change any whole numbers I have into fractions. To change 48 into a fraction, all we do is put a 1 underneath in the denominator. To change 1 and 1 half into an improper fraction, we're going to multiply and add. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. It gives us 3 halves. So 1 and 1 half is equivalent to 3 halves. 48 is equivalent to 48 over 1. At this point, it's still a division problem. In order for me to do the division, though, I'm going to change this problem into a multiplication problem. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I can start with the first number, keep it exactly the same way. I'm changing it to multiplication. And the reciprocal of 3 halves 
would be the number that I get when I flip it upside down. Two thirds. Now all we need to do is multiply. When I multiply across the top in the numerators, um, I get 48 times 2. 48 times 2 is 96. When I multiply across the bottom in the denominators, 1 times 3 is 3. We end up with an improper fraction as an answer. So we know that to actually use this number and for this number to make more sense to our brains, we want to go ahead and convert that into a whole number or a mixed number. So to do that, we're going to divide from the top to the bottom. 96 divided by 3. That's what I call chicken scratch. I might come up here and, and divide 96 by 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. I subtract, I get 0. I bring down my next number, 6, and I can put 3 into 6 twice because 2 times 3 is exactly 6. When I subtract at this point, I get 0 as my remainder. So I know that my answer is the whole number, 32. Oops. So what we could do with the 32 then is we can take this scale factor, bring it back up into the problem, and we know that multiplying 1 and 1 half times 32 gives us 48 cups. So when, in order to scale equivalent ratios, just like equivalent fractions. We need to make sure we treat the top of the ratio exactly the same way as we treated the bottom. So we're going to multiply the top by 32 as well. So 1 times 32 equals 32 servings. So back to the question. How many servings of chicken soup are in 48 cups? If I have 48 total cups of soup, it's going to give me 32 servings of soup. So my answer would be 32 servings. Now, at the very bottom of the page, it gives you a very interesting question to consider. The question at the bottom asks us, it's a little bit more of a challenge question, it asks us, how is dividing fractions related to multiplying fractions? Well, we touched on that a little bit here when we Worked, when we worked out the division of fractions problem, 48 divided by 1 and 1 half. Remember how we talked about working with fractions. We don't actually divide fractions. We actually change the division into multiplication. So what's the relationship between dividing fractions and multiplying fractions? Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. So I hope this gave us a good introduction into the work we're going to do today. Today on your performance task, your questions are all related to ratios and rates. There are six total questions, however, I'm going to spend time on the first three questions. And uh, I'll leave the rest to you, four, five, and six. So we notice on the very first question, we're talking about Jorge planting flowers in his garden. So let's read the first question and think about that together. Number one, Jorge planted flowers in his garden. He planted one row of 12 tulips and one row of 36 daisies. What is the ratio of tulips to daisies that Jorge planted? Express the ratio as a fraction and as a decimal. The first thing I notice about this problem is obviously the question. They want us to figure out a ratio of tulips to daisies that Jorge planted. Remember when we learned about ratios and rates, the order is extremely important. Since the question asks us to put the ratio of tulips to daisies in that order, tulips first and then daisies, we're going to begin with the number of tulips, 12, and the number of daisies, 36, that Jorge planted. So I'm going to begin by writing that out as a ratio. There are 12 tulips for every 36 daisies. I need to express my ratio as a fraction and as a decimal. Remember that when you're expressing ratios as fractions, you always want to simplify it down to the most simplified 
fraction it can be. So when I see the numbers 12 and 36, I realize that I can divide both those numbers by 12. 12 is in fact the greatest common factor between the two numbers. If I divide the top by 12, 12 divided by 12 gives me one tulip. And on the bottom, 36 divided by 12 gives me three daisies. So expressing the ratio as a fraction, my answer is one tulip for every three daisies. It's a simplified ratio. Now, to express this as a decimal, we would actually have to convert the fraction one-third into a decimal. Remember, to do that work, we really want to treat one-third as a very teeny tiny division problem. This is actually one divided by three. We can change any fraction into a decimal by dividing from the top to the bottom. So one-third is the same as 1.0 divided by three. When we do that division, we realize that we get an answer of 0 0.33. What that means is that there are 33 hundredths tulips to daisies. To every one daisy, actually. So here you have the answer expressed as a fraction first, and then, of course, as a decimal, because we converted that fraction one-third into decimal form. Now, on number two, we're, we're going back and still thinking about Jorge's information in number one. We're going to use that information a little bit in number two. Let's look at number two. Let's read this together. One of the plants in Jorge's garden grows at the rate of two inches in three months. A second plant grows at the rate of three inches in two months. Which plant grows at the faster rate? Explain. Now since we're trying to calculate and figure out which plant grows at the faster rate, we know that we can go back and think about what we call unit rates. We can express each rate as a rate uh, per one unit of time. When I think about comparing two different ratios, I realize that we can also use scaling in order to scale up. So let's start with the problem. We have plant one and plant two. Let's begin with plant one. Plant one grows at the rate of two inches in three months. Plant two grows at the rate of three inches in two months. I know that I can compare the size of these ratios and the rates therein by actually creating a common denominator between these two ratios. We can scale three and two up to the same denominator. So when I think about the numbers three and two, I'm thinking about what larger number has the factors of both three and two. In other words, what can I multiply by three and by two to get the same number? I'm thinking in my brain that I'm going to use the number six. I'm going to scale these up to six months to make a comparison. On plant one, to scale three months up to six months, I would multiply three times two. I'm going to treat the top of the ratio exactly the same. So two inches times two gives me four inches. So plant one grows at the rate of four inches every six months. Plant two, if I scale from two months up to six months, I'm actually multiplying by three. Two times three is six. So I'm gonna treat the top of the ratio the same. Three inches times three gives me nine inches. When we make a comparison at this point, we're comparing how tall the plants are gonna be after six months time passes. So if plant one's gonna be four inches in six months, Plant two is going to be nine inches in six months. Therefore, my answer would be plant two. Plant true grows faster. In six months, 
it will be nine inches tall. Oops, there we go. Now you can get a better look at both number one and number two together. On to number three, we can see because it's a performance task, we're still referring back to Jorge's garden and Jorge's flowers. Let's zoom in and read number three together. Number three, Jorge's friend Anna planted a garden with the same ratio of tulips to daisies. Anna's garden has 48 tulips. How many total flowers are in Anna's garden? The first thing I notice about this question is the question itself. How many total flowers are in Anna's garden? That word total is important to me because I know we're not talking about just tulips or daisies. We're talking about both tulips and daisies added together. When I thought about this problem, I actually started with the ratio of 1 to 3. One tulip for every three daisies. This is the simplified ratio that we started or that we uh, determined from number one. So one tulip for every three daisies. Now I know that we need to scale these up to 48 tulips. So really we're just scaling one tulip up to 48 in order to figure out how many daisies that Anna has. Jorge has one tulip for every three daisies. We're going to keep the same ratio of tulips to daisies and we're going to scale the tulips up to 48 tulips. We know from our experience with ratios that in order to find out how many daisies there are we would need to treat the top and the bottom of the ratios the same. So to scale from one tulip up to 48 tulips, we have to multiply times 48. When we multiply on the bottom by the same number times 48, we get 144 daisies. So if Jorge's friend Anna plants a garden and she keeps the same ratio of tulips to daisies, one tulip for every three daisies, but she has 48 tulips, that means she has to have 144 daisies in her garden. But look back at the question. The question says, how many total flowers are in Anna's garden? This question actually forces us to go back and look at both tulips and daisies together as a group of flowers. So in order to find a total number, we're going to add 144 daisies plus 48 tulips. All together, when we do that addition, we get 192 total flowers. Great. Numbers 4, 5, and 6 extend your thinking beyond um, the point where we left off. So we've done numbers 1, 2, and 3. I'll leave 4, 5, and 6 to you. What I'd like to do today, though, is introduce you to a new challenge problem that you can work on yourself over the week and then uh, get the answer to next week. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see our new ratio challenge question for the week. Our question says, at a clothes shop, the ratio of number of skirts to coats to hats is 3 to 5 to 6. There are 120 skirts and coats all together. If the shop sells each hat for $20, how much money can be collected from the sale of all hats in dollars? Thank you very much, everybody. Um, that was today's lesson over ratios and rates. 
Um, next week you'll have uh, the answer presented to you for the challenge question. And I do want to remind everybody that there are other resources on the KCS website. You could always visit the KCS website to find more resources to extend your learning. Thank you very much.